In today's video, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks to stay motivated to play Minecraft long term. I've been playing in this world for well over an entire year of playtime, and that's without any AFK whatsoever. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of tips on what you guys can do to stay motivated and keep to keep you busy in Minecraft for longer. Now, the first one comes pretty straightforward, but... You have advancements in the game that you could be doing. I have every single advancement in the game at this point, even the harder secret advancements. But these were a lot of fun. They do give you a little bit of a motivation and a little bit of a direction to go with when it comes down to the game itself. But one big tip I would have for you guys is make sure that you're kind of savoring these moments. You don't want to speed run your way through all of these advancements unless that's your style and you want to kind of speed run it, but pace yourself. If you want to pace yourself through the advancements, I've been, I literally just finished every single advancement in the game and I've been playing in this world for well over three years now. So take that into consideration. Do your advancements. Could be a lot of fun. Which brings me to the next one build in different styles and constantly challenge yourself try to do things that you've never done before the focus behind this build was i was supposed to try to build a boat and to each one of these builds every build style is going to teach you something new pushing forward don't stay in your comfort zone from bright and colorful to dark and spooky two completely different styles yet I learned two completely different things from them. One of them being the rooftops, playing a little bit more with peaks and stuff like that. As you can see back here, a completely new style. This one was more focused around different types of terraforming and a little bit more of an overgrown Greek vibe. But there's something to basically learn when taking on different build styles in Minecraft. Build a city if you want. What's holding you back? Build some cities, build some vehicles, different types of vehicles. This is actually an industrial area as well. You got hippie vans, we got mopeds or vespas or whatever you want to call them. Trash alleys, Amazon vans. We got trains back here. The sky is the limit when it comes to basically building anything you want to do in Minecraft. So I encourage you to build as many different things as possible because as time goes on, you're going to learn to build faster and better. Another big thing to keep you guys motivated for a very long time is to connect your builds through different pathways. Creating pathways to kind of walk and not just fly around everywhere is going to change your immersion throughout your world, allowing you to take in different builds from different sight lines like this. But also to create a way more immersive environment. There's so much things that I need to work on still around this area, a lot of flat areas, but that gives me reasons to basically build like cool look looking boulders and trees and different shapes and plan for the future. Over here, for instance, I wanna build a lighthouse. I think that'd be a really nice place. Build boats, but basically bring your world together. That would be one massive way that you could stay motivated in Minecraft. Another big way to stay motivated in Minecraft is to collect mobs. Try to, try to collect every mob in the game and challenge yourself because every mob comes with their own challenges and tribulations on how to capture them. I have camels, I've got all lays, I have sniffers, but I even have some of the more challenging mobs in my world to keep me motivated for longer. Blazes. Have you ever caught a blaze before? How would you catch a blaze? How do you guys think I caught these blazes besides the minecart? That's obvious. If you know, let me know. I also have Elder Guardians. If you could see him barely up there. And a lot of wardens in my world. Ten of them to be exact. But that's not it. I've got almost every single mob in this world captured. And they all come with their own challenge. We have polar bears, which you can't really like move around. We got sniffers, like I said. And then you have the rarer mobs, such as the charged creeper, 
the different kind of cats, even those aren't rare. You have your Halloween mobs, which are a lot of fun in order to capture. Dogs, easy. You got your diamond mobs, not a full diamond zombie or skeleton, whatever that is. But we also have little trident boys over here. A very tough one. Hello? Shulkers? Shulkers are incredibly tough. Different kinds of pandas. The brown panda, the worried panda, the angry panda. All of the pandas in the game. Zoglins. And so much more. Such as phantoms. That's an upside down dinner phantom. Dinner bone phantom? Dinner phantom. Yeah, that's an upside down dinner bone phantom. Just to make it look like it's actually flying the right way. Don't just collect mobs, but give them a special place in your world. Such as the blue axolotl took me months to get. But it was so rewarding once I did get the blue axolotl. Same thing goes with another one of the wardens. This is my very first warden I ever moved. That one will be a very special one. That lives inside my swamp. We have the baby zoglin. I love to collect different kinds of mobs, as you guys can see. I got Ravagers, Charged Creepers, Ocelots, Snow Foxes. You have your Brown Mushrooms, your full Diamond Mobs, Regular Guardians, Bees, Skelly Horses. The whole nine yards, I'm sure you guys understand and get the picture, but collect up all the mobs and give them a cool home. Another super fun thing to do that I never see anybody ever do, no blocks. Add no blocks in your world to give your world a little bit more life. This is my overworld hub here. This basically connects up all of my builds that are a little bit too close for my nether hub to basically connect us to, which segues ourselves into the next dimension, which... I feel is a really fun build, so let's get into this. Build a really fun, cool minecart track ride that takes you through different things in your world. This one is themed after Super Mario Kart Rainbow Road. This was a lot of fun basically bringing this to life. You'll see that I've got a lot of really cool micro blocks and stuff like that as well, which are a ton of fun. Speaking about fun, one of the biggest things that keeps me motivated is stats and achievements. So here's a little bit of something that you can introduce into your Minecraft world that I feel like will keep you motivated for even longer. This is my board of achievements. This is where I keep track of every single farm I've ever completed in this world. All of the mega bases and mega builds that I have throughout my world is all found here. All of the stats that I have in the millions is kept up there. And this is where I keep track of how many days I have survived in Hardcore Minecraft. Even though you may not be playing Hardcore Minecraft, doesn't mean you can't have your own achievement board. But important, make sure you make your achievement board big enough to grow into over the years. Speaking of stats real fast, I can show you guys a little bit of the stats that I have in this world that keep me going. I'm pushing for 5 million jumps in Minecraft. I'm put, I just passed over 1 million mobs killed. I don't AFK. Like I said, we have the one year of play time. We have our sneak time, which just passed 100 days. Trading with villagers is at 1.2 million. Another one of the cool mods, uh, mods, the mobs that we're trying to push for right now would be our guardians. So we just passed half a million guardians killed in the world. The next stat after that that we would love to do would be the wither skellies. Where are they at? Um, so wither skellies would be a really cool one to also push for half a million in. And then items as well. Almost at 3 million netherrack, almost 2.5 million stone. I would love to get the end stone into the millions, but do you see where I'm coming from? A million is a big number, and to put a million on the board is a huge deal. So, do something like that. 
And you know how I said to always push yourself and push yourself out of your comfort zone? Well, this right here is a build that I'm working on currently. And let me tell you what, if I couldn't push myself out of my comfort zone far enough, this is definitely it. There is so much math involved in this build that I'm just not comfortable with. That and the sheer size of this build is very intimidating. This is about a 141 block sphere that goes all the way around with some more shapes and stuff going around it. It is not a planet. It is not a Death Star. You'll have to find out what that is in the future, but still pushing myself. Once you start to build a lot of builds throughout your world, one huge thing that you're going to start to want to work on is, of course, a nether hub. You're going to want to build up a nether hub to connect your entire world. As you can see, my nether hub is a huge work in progress, but my nether hubs brings me out to different parts of my world, depending on where I want to go. This one takes me to my ocean monument, my witch farm, my raid coliseum. Down here takes me to Alice in Wonderland with a bunch of other things, my blaze farm. You guys get the picture. You want to build yourself a big nether hub that's continuously growing with your world to connect your builds together throughout time. Another really big thing that can help keep you motivated is armor stands. So I have a really cool armor stand mod in my world that allows me to customize armor stands in my Java world. And let me show you a little bit of the possibilities behind these armor stands because there's so many things you could do. Make people look like they're building snowmen, having snowball fights, hanging out, checking out rooftops of uh, different builds and stuff like that. Just walking around is very nice. It brings life to a single player world that you wouldn't normally get otherwise. There's the plethora of different things that you can do in your world just using armor stands alone, creating little stories, Christmas things. We got people out here ice skating, playing hockey, bailing, uh, jumping into giant things of snow on the floor. You can create stories with armor stands, which brings me into another big thing that you guys are probably wondering, but customizing your wandering trader so you are able to get cool fancy micro blocks so i feel as if the micro blocks are a huge hit no matter where you're from people absolutely love the micro blocks but nobody knows how i get them well i get them through the wandering trader every time that the wandering trader spawns in he basically offers me different blocks that i add into the pack whether that may be legend of zelda um, what is this? This is Spongebob and Adventure Time and Animal Crossing and Hello Kitty. We got Super Mario. We got cartoons. We got Pokemon. So if I wanted to, I could basically utilize really cool things like this to decorate my world. Which can go an extremely long way. Not only does it do that, but it also makes whenever the Wandering Trader spawns in your world extremely exciting. Another extremely big thing that nobody ever wants to hear, but build cool organics in your world. Build dragons, build all kinds of organics. I feel like organics are so incredibly intimidating, but as soon as I started to basically practice organics, it brought my world to a completely different level. So try your hand at building organics. This is my second dragon, so don't judge too much. And with broken dragons comes broken farms. Check this thing out. Build some crazy, insane farms that you have never built before. Things that you feel like would be a lot more challenging moving forward. I'm not a technical Minecrafter, but it's really cool to be able to push the limits of Minecraft and just see exactly what is possible. This farm behind me is pretty insane. I'm pretty sure I want to say the right person here, but I confuse them up all the time. I think this is an ill mango design that I have made some tweaks to along the way just to make it a little bit more insane and a little bit more custom to us. But 
Right now, I'm getting upwards to 533 guardians inside of this little area right here. I've never built anything this crazy before. But I can tell you what, it gives you a crazy amount of levels. Another big thing that I focus on to keep the longevity in my world is create lore. Create wars in your world. Create really cool stories in your world. Give your builds a little bit more of a direction with what's going on. For instance, my blaze mages here that Zopa has in his army is fighting a current war against Elusive in the Piglins. Fighting over territory in the nether. Fighting over gold and who owns more of the nether between the two, which is really cool. Questions. Why is there a dragon here? Where did all this skulk come from? Why is the dragon so massive? Maybe this is an elder dragon from multiple generations ago. Maybe this world was once run by elder dragons throughout the world. Lore gives your builds a direction and a place to go. So lore is absolutely massive. I'm also very important things for you guys to know is don't push yourself through a project that you're not typically feeling. If you're not particularly feeling a project and you kind of want to move on and you're feeling burnt out, well, don't hesitate to move forward and try something new and keep your brain stimulated. Down here, I have a little bit of the Hobbit Shire from the Lord of the Rings. Well, you'll see I have Gandalf, his cart, his horses all the really cute houses and stuff like that little little uh, little frog we also have the ring being f uh, fished up from a little bit of a boat over here but this gives a little bit of a story on its own in a completely different build style I really hope I helped generate some really cool ideas for you guys moving forward in the future I've got tons of videos on the channel that hopefully will help motivate you. If you guys have any really cool ideas with what you want to do in your world, let me know in the comment section down below. And if this video helped you out, give it a like. Subscribe if you want some more. But anyways, I hope to see you guys crafting in the future. Till next time, bye.